हेलो स्टूडेंट्स हाव आई यू ऑल आई होप यू ऑल आर फाइन सो लेट्स बिगिन विथ टू डेज क्लास इन अब अर्लियर क्लासेज वी ऑलरेडी स्टडीड अबाउट द डिफरेंट बेसिक फंक्शन ऑफ द कंस्टिट्यूशन राइट सो आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू अ क्विक रिविजन अबाउट द बेसिक फंक्शन वी स्टडीड इन अवर अर्लियर क्लासेस सी वी स्टार्टेड ओवर हियर बेसिक फीचर्स ऑफ द कंस्टिट्यूशन we studied that the constitution's basic feature is that it is a written document then there was size of constitution then there was third topic which was single citizenship and the fourth one was the center with strong federal structure so our constitution or our country is following the federal type of government right then in that also we had three types of list that is union list state list and concurrent list then the next was residuary powers we already studied about the residuary powers then the fifth topic was unified arrangement during crisis what we can do during the times of crisis and how does the constitution can be changed or what are the things which can be changed during the crisis like any type of crisis whether it can be a financial crisis or any economic crisis right so after that we studied about the parliamentary system we studied that the there are two types of parliament in the parliamentary system there are two houses which is the lower house and the upper house we also studied about the powers and the retirement of the members of that parliament right in today's class we are going to study about the independent and impartial judiciary so basically our indian constitution is giving the people or the citizens the right to go in the courts like any time if a person is not satisfied or if a person is not getting justice he or she is independent or free to go and fight in the courts let's begin the constitution has provided for the establishment of an independent and impartial judiciary so basically our indian constitution gives us independent and impartial judicial system there is a supreme court at the top then there are high courts at the states and under its jurisdiction are district courts and at district level and at the taluka level there are local and special courts so basically the head of all the court is the supreme court as i already explained you or you must have already been studied in the in your earlier standards about the courts right so there are basically three types of courts the supreme court the high court and the district court right so we at the first level is the supreme court and then under that there is high court then after high court there are districts and taluka level courts which is local and special courts right there are also different types of courts in our area or there are courts at different talukas there are courts for different districts and then on that they have a state court also that is called as high court and on that above the first or the highest the supreme is the supreme court right so we can go to the courts according to our problems the judgment of the supreme court are binding to all the subordinate courts of the nation so mostly the judgments of the supreme court are are to be considered as the first in case of conflicts between the union and state governments matters relating to constitution are and interpretation of statutes the final decision is vested with the supreme court so if there is a problem with state and the union government so in that case only the supreme court has the power to give the decision on that the supreme court is the protector and the guardian of the constitution so as the supreme court has given the main position it is called as the protector or the guardian of the constitution so supreme court takes decision according to the constitution now our 
नेक्स्ट टॉपिक और द बेसिक नेक्स्ट फीचर ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज अमेंडमेंट्स इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ना वॉट डू मीन बाई अमेंडमेंट्स अमेंडमेंट्स मीन्स टू चेंज और टू एडिट और टू री राइट राइट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू चेंज सम रूल्स और सम लॉज इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो इज इट पॉसिबल और नॉट सो इन अवर केस इट इज पॉसिबल हाउ लेट सी कंपेयर टू अदर कंट्रीज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया इन इज डायनामिक सो इन कंपेयर ऑफ अदर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इन ऑफ अदर कंट्रीज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अवर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज डायनामिक विच मीन्स फ्लेक्सीबल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन कैन बी अमेंडमेंट एज वेन एज एंड वेन रिक्वायर्ड सो देर कैन देर कैन बी चेंजेस मेड अकॉर्डिंग टू अवर डिसीजन्स और अकॉर्डिंग टू अवर रिक्वायरमेंट constitutional provision can be amended in three ways now to change the amendments in the constitution there are some rules and procedures to be followed see we are going to study here which are the rules and how can an amendment in the constitution be changed how can there be amendment made in the constitution amendment can be made by a simple majority of members present and voting in the parliament so as we all know that most of the laws or all the laws which are to be made are first present in the parliament right so if the parliament gives them a majority vote then only this amendment can be made certain amendments require a special majority so if there is any big decision or decisions related at the central level or at the union level that means at the country level right so that at that time two third majority of member present and voting so we require two third votes of from the parliament concurring the union state relation the special majority that is two third and the con- and the concurrence not less than 50% of the state legislature is required so if there is any decision which need which is related to union state relation and then there is a special majority that is two third and the concurrence not less than 50% of the state legislature we also require the voting from the state legislatures if there is any amendment to be made in the interrelation between union state structure of or the supreme judiciary then half of the state from the total states have to give consent so if you want to make any changes in the constitution or if you want to amend any interrelations between the union and the state there is a change between the union and the state level then what the supreme court uh, gives that what the supreme court tells that you should have the votes of at least half of the states right so from the total state you should have the permission of at least half states judgment of the court can also be also bring amendment by the parliament so there will be no change in the basic structure of the constitution so this judgment if the you want to change the amend you want to amend anything or that law is to be given by the supreme court or this thing will be the judgment of the court can also bring amendment by the parliament so this decision will be taken by the parliament there will be no change in the basic structure of the constitution the basic structure will not change but only the internal laws can be changed so simple majority in the parliament can bring change in the amendments of the constitution that's why the constitution is known as most inconstant and flexible document but at certain cases it is not amendable by the simple majority see so it is very simple or it is very easy to amend in the constitution but to amend in the constitution we require the majority votes by the parliament and that's why the constitution is known as the most flexible document see because we can easily change the laws that is the reason the constitution is called as the flexible document again there are certain changes or there are certain laws 
on some of the cases the amendment is not on the majority it requires certain other rules to be followed not in all cases we can change the amendment by majority in some of the cases we require or we need to follow some other procedures as well without the majority consent of states is not amendable then too the mixture of both makes the constitution so although some of the cases we cannot amend but in some of the cases we can easily amend the constitution so our constitution is mixture of both right so over here i'm going to stop we'll continue the chapter in the next class thank you